Hi there, and welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And we're doing something a little bit different today. I just recently bought an iPad stand, and we're going to see how this works because I've been reading from the actual book, Dare to Call Him Friend. And some people have asked me to look up more into the camera, so we're going to see how this works, but I'm still going to be reading from the book, so you're going to see me kind of look in this way more times than not. But hey, this is a step up. And today, we're going to talk about a different reality. Now, I'm not really into this genre of TV, but I know a lot of people are. They really like those reality shows. Uh, they like Big Brother in the United States. They like Top Model, Top Chef, Survivor, The Amazing Race, etc., etc. Now, a lot of these so-called reality shows are, in fact, not really reality because much of the editing makes you think you're seeing something, but it's actually totally different than what was actually happening behind the scenes. But there is something in common that you'll find in all of those shows. Most of the contestants are extremely good looking. Most are charismatic. Most are very assured. Most of them are able to communicate really well. And most of them know how to manipulate others in order for them to get what they want in the end. And as a result, the person who wins the top prize is often rewarded because of their ability to use their talents, their attractiveness, uh, their physical presence to manipulate and to stab others in the back. Walking with God is a totally different reality. And 1 Corinthians 1 verse 26 to 31 really says it well. For consider your calling, and not many of you were wise according to worldly standards, and not many were powerful, and not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. And God chose what is low and despised in the world, even those things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord and not in yourself. Had Jesus consulted with a public relations firm when he first chose the 12 disciples, I have a feeling the 12 disciples would have looked a lot different than the ones we actually read about. There would have been the first century equivalent of the well-educated, respected clergyman who knew the letter of the law. And then there would have been handsome, athletic, and charismatic young adults who lived in the higher social strata. The list of potential disciples would have to include well-spoken individuals as they would reach the largest audiences with their wit and charisma. Riffraff such as fishermen, shall we say, and tax collectors uh, would probably be kept as far away from Jesus as possible unless they were needed for choreographed media opportunities. You see, God's view of success is so different than our own and what the world tells us. We don't need to prove anything to prove our worthiness to be accepted. We're already accepted through the blood of the Lord Jesus. We don't need to climb over others to reach that prize. And he freely gives to anyone who comes to him with a humble, transparent heart. In fact, he penalizes those who use others for their own gain. In his kingdom, it's topsy-turvy because the first will be last and the last shall be first. Genesis until 
the end of acts. God used those who maybe had a speech impediment, chronic shyness, unattractive appearance, and little charisma as his spokespeople on the earth. Why would he do such a thing? I think it's because there would be no doubt that it was actually him doing the stuff and it wasn't the people that God chose to be his spokespeople. Just look at Moses who complained to God that he had a speech impediment so that let him off the hook. God used him to part the Red Sea. God used those everyday people of Israel to walk around the walls of Jericho until they fell down. And God used people like Peter and Paul and John and Barnabas, just everyday people to heal the sick and to see the blind recover their sight and to see the lame walk. Again, why? Because God wanted people to see that God can use anyone when they're energized by his Holy Spirit. We can be used to draw anyone into the kingdom. And God uses the same sort of people today, you and me. He uses those who are transparent, vulnerable, and real. They know that they're not trying to prove a point. And he really is happy when he finds people who will not bend his truth or compromise their own integrity, even when it might cost them. So if you have been thinking that God can't possibly use you or that you've got some sort of get out of jail free card, like somebody who might have jury duty and they go to be accessed and they're hoping they get excused and they've got a list of all the reasons why they think that they should be excused. God doesn't look at those excuse lists as excuses for him to let you off the hook. In reality, all those things that you got written down in your little head that says God can't possibly use me because, and go down that list, God's saying, just look at who I can use because this person and all those around them will know that it couldn't have possibly been just them that touched the lives of those that God has called you to touch.